In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It was a way that you could destroy your enemy while at the same time being able to enslave all of his strength. Or it was a way that, that you could lose a battle to your enemy without losing your life. You would send out your champion. And in place of a massive battle between two armies, there would be a fight, a, a single combat battle between one warrior from each side. They would fight to the death. They called them champions. These warriors that would walk out into the middle ground between two warring armies and fight to the death. Like David and Goliath, if you were a champion for your army, you fought for your people. You fought to defeat the enemy for them. You fought for victory. Now, when God created the world, he placed mankind into a perfect garden, and the enemy of God, the devil, came to stand on the field of battle against our first parents, Adam and Eve. He sought to make war against all mankind. And we know how he attacked. He, he attacked our first parents with the, the sword of doubt. You remember how he did that? He, he said, how can God really love you as much as he said he loves you if he's keeping this good fruit from you, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? He tempted them with the sword and the attack of, uh, toward pride, the temptation to be filled with pride. Well, if you eat this fruit, you're going to be like God. You won't be little and small like you are right now. Don't you want that for yourselves? And he attacked with, with complete and utter lies, too. You will not surely die. Adam and Eve couldn't stand against this foe. And when they were defeated, they plunged the world into a time of darkness and despair and death, a, a loss that comes all the way down to us as, as we struggle with the inheritance of our first parents because that's what happens when the champion loses a battle. The victor can then claim that everything belongs to him. And that's what the devil did. This world and these people then were his subjects, his slaves. But our mighty God, he, he saw the, the pain and the brokenness of this world and the suffering of his people, and he promised to go to war for his children. He promised to send them his champion. He promised that his son would come to fight the battle that we could not win, that he would come to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. And the whole Old Testament is the story of this champion and how fathers would tell their children about how this promised champion was going to come. You can, you can hear it in the lives of the patriarchs and their children and the generations that came after them, pointing their, their children to the promise, God's going to send his champion. He's going to come. He's going to win. He's going to battle for us. All the way down to the time when God made good on his promise and took on flesh in the the womb of the Virgin Mary, to be our champion and to go to war for us, to fight our battle, to right our wrong in single combat. And so the war for mankind was joined when, when the, the light of the world and the prince of darkness lined up against one another on the field of battle. It happened over and over again in our Savior's life, but we see an example of that, one of these battles in our gospel reading this morning. Luke records these three attacks, and all the rest of the gospel writers include these things too, but there were many. And it happens right after. Jesus is still wet with the waters of his baptism when the Holy Spirit drives him out into the desert to face these temptations, to to battle against the devil. 
still ringing in his ears and in the ears of the people were, were the words of God the Father saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus fasted for 40 days and he was hungry. And so the devil attacked. If you're the beloved son of God, He's not taking very good care of you. You should take care of things for yourself. You should do it. Don't wait around for him to do it because he's not doing a very good job. Tell these stones to become bread. And so the sword of doubt flashes again. It makes sense. If it was such a good attack on the first Adam, why not use it on the second Adam? That's what we sometimes call Jesus. You're kind of familiar with that sort of doubt, that temptation to doubt, aren't you? You're like me. You, you know this is what God said about you and your baptism. The same thing he said about Jesus. He said, this is my daughter. This is my son. I love him. I love her. With her, I am well pleased. With him, I am well pleased. But it doesn't always seem so. Maybe it's when the bills pile up and you're tempted to think, well, what, what's the use of the riches of God's glory if I don't have enough money to pay what I owe? God says that he loves me and that I am loved by him. Well, then why does he allow me to get injured? Why does he let me get sick? Why does he take my loved one from me and leave me alone? Why is it that he lets me suffer hour upon hour of misery and pain or loneliness or heartbreak? Why doesn't he fix all the, the problems and the relationships that I have so that I can have a companion? In essence, if, if God is so good, why is life so bad? And so the temptation comes to doubt and despair. But Jesus, we, we, we look to him and, and we listen to him and we see this example of how to, how to battle against the devil's temptations. It's as if Jesus turned to Satan and said, you're a liar and you will not win. For it is written, man does not live on bread alone. The other gospel writers also include Jesus' words, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is your defense where the devil comes with his doubts, trying to lure you into setting aside what God has for you instead to, to listen to your own fickle emotions. When, when you're tempted like this, I know it's hard to hear, but don't trust yourself. Trust your Father. Feed on Him in His Word. When your heart hungers for some kind of peace and for some kind of, of joy in the midst of this broken world with all of its problems, when your heart is just hungering for something to latch on to, feed on his words and his promises to you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Though the mountains be shaken and hills be removed, though this world swirls around in a hurricane and, and threatens to destroy you, my unfailing love for you is never going to be shaken. And my covenant of peace, it's going nowhere. It's here for you. Well, next came the, 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 the attack of pride from the devil. He says, look at all this stuff, Jesus. All of these kingdoms, you can have it without the suffering and the dying, without having to pay for it. I'll give it to you. You can have all of the glory and all of the, the adulation. You can have it all if you will bow down and worship me. But we know that our Savior did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many to give his life as a ransom for me and for you. And if he didn't come to be served, he certainly didn't come to pursue wealth and fame and glory of his own. He came to fear and love and trust in God above all things. 
and in doing so to keep the law for you and for me. And so again, it's as if Jesus says, Satan, you lie. You will not win. And he again destroys the devil's attack with the word of God. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. From the highest point in the temple, Satan says, prove that God loves you as much as you seem to say that he loves you. Throw yourself down from the temple. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. Yes, that's what we sang. That's what the psalmist says. But the deceiver leaves off a couple of important words that come after that. He will guard you in all your ways. As you walk in him, in faith in him, he will guard you in all things. Not when you go off on your own way. Not when you turn away from his way to try and find your own way. No, again, Jesus It's as if he responds to the devil, you lie and you will not win. It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. This is the kind of champion we need. It's the kind of champion who knows us very well, who knows where all of our weaknesses are, who knows where we are vulnerable, who knows that, that we're more prone to have our priorities on the physical bread and the physical wealth and comfort and all the things of this world instead of on service to God and others. He's the kind of champion who knows us who knows that when the time comes for us to fight against these temptations, when we, with our new strength, when we want to do what is right, but we don't, or we can't, or we simply won't. He's the champion we need because he's the champion who knows that we can't do this on our own. If you're like me, there's no battle cry that you can shout that's going to give you the strength on yourself to do it. There's no amount of pep talks or self-help books that I can read that are going to get me over the hump. Every day is an ongoing spiritual battle. The devil never raves a white flag of truce for a little while. Every day is a battle against the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, and it's a battle we just can't win. The harder we try, it seems, the more we fail. And if we're looking within ourselves, we can't help but, but think we're this close to being destroyed. When you're like that, it just seems so exhausting and tiring. Your arms get tired, your body gets tired, your very soul gets tired. If that's where you've been or where you are right now, there's, you know there is such good news for us. Because this is the message that, that Jesus' victory in temptation against the devil gives us. It's, it's the message that when you feel you are just about to be destroyed, you are completely exhausted, you can't do one more battle, it's as if you feel a, a hand on your shoulder and you turn around and there stands the champion of God. And he tells us, I am God's champion. I am here. I will fight for you. With my death, with my resurrection, with the price that I pay for your sin and the way that I defeat your enemies, I fight for you and he's a liar and he will not win. You will be victorious in me forever. You see, what you and I couldn't do, this champion has done for us. This tempter that we could never defeat on our own Jesus has defeated in our place. And this new life, all of these victories that we could never achieve on our own, Jesus has created for us. You see, he's the victor. And as the champion, he gets to claim you for himself. With might of ours cannot be done. You know, nothing can be done. Soon were our loss effected, but for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. You ask who this may be, Christ Jesus, it is he, the Lord of hosts his name, from age to age the same, he holds the field forever.
Amen. Now the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.